Welcome back to Great SpaceX. Elon Musk's space exploration and satellite company SpaceX has achieved another big milestone yesterday when successfully stacking Starship S-20 on the Super Heavy Booster 4 for the third time from SpaceX South Texas launch site. One day before this event, Starship S-20 was moved towards the launch tower and on March 15th, the ship was slotted between its chopstick arms. Now it's the second time the chopsticks were used to fully stack the Starship S-20 with Super Heavy Booster 4. SpaceX's Starship SN-20 is stacked atop its massive Super Heavy Booster 4 for the first time on August 6, 2021 at the company's Starbase facility near Boca Chica Village in South Texas. It stood 395 feet tall, taller than NASA's Saturn V moon rocket. At the time, the stacking was achieved using super large cranes, but since using the chopstick arms to stack and destack Starship, it was Elon Musk's dream. He made it reality last month. This time around, though, SpaceX clearly learned a great deal from its second February 9th Starship stack and was able to complete the stacking process several times faster. During the second attempt, depending on how one measures it, it took SpaceX around three and a half hours from the start of the lift to Starship fully resting on Super Heavy. With Stack 3, however, SpaceX was able to lift, translate, lower, and attach Starship to Super Heavy in just over an hour. Wow, that's a nice, shiny broomstick. And what a glorious sight! I just wish I were there. Oddly, SpaceX managed that feat without a claw-like device meant to grab and stabilize Super Heavy during stacking operations while stack number two, all three arms were fully in play. Prior to stack three, SpaceX removed both of the swing arms claws, meaning it had no way to grab onto Super Heavy. That diminished capability clearly appeared to have zero impact on the ease or speed of the stacking process, given it was completed a full three times faster than stack two. That could imply that the claw is either completely unnecessary or only needed in extreme winds. What really saved time on Stack 3 was a faster lift and fewer pauses throughout, especially while lowering Starship the last several meters onto Super Heavy. During Stack 2, SpaceX took close to an hour and a half to fully lower Ship 20. That same sequence took under 20 minutes during Stack 3. So what's the purpose of this full stack? It certainly holds promise for SpaceX's next big stride, but let's go back to more than a year ago. The first full stack completed in early August 2021 was mostly for show and saw SpaceX stack the unfinished prototypes with a giant crane, fighting the coastal winds throughout. After just a few hours stacked, Ship 20 was removed and returned to Starbase, where workers spent several more weeks mostly finishing the prototype. Booster 4 followed suit several weeks later and ultimately took another three months of work to reach some level of test readiness. After Ship 20 and Booster 4 completed a series of tests in the last few months of 2021 and early 2022, the two were restacked in mid-February, once again for show. This time, the stacked Starship served as a backdrop for SpaceX CEO Elon Musk's first official Starship presentation in over two years. However, despite the fact that neither prototype was actually tested during the second stack, SpaceX did use the opportunity to partially debut Starbase's Orbital Launch Integration Tower and use that tower trio of giant arms to lift, stack, and stabilize Starship S-20 on top of Super Heavy B-4. Ship 20 was de-stacked with the tower's arms just a few days after Musk event an undeniably rapid and impressive achievement for the first real use of chopstick arms, but still far from demonstrating that Ship 20, Booster 4, or the Orbital Launch Site, OLS, are ready for orbital test flights. Since then, however, Starbase's launch facilities have admittedly been almost as busy as they've ever been with Starship and Super Heavy cryoproof test. Ship 20 completed its first basic OLS cryogenic proof test, or cryoproof, just two days after it was destacked. Additional Starship S-20 cryo proofs followed on February 17th, the day after, February 22nd, and March 3rd. 
Super Heavy B4 completed its own cryo proofs on February 18th and March 1st, the latter of which may have actually been the fullest a Starship booster had ever been filled. All told, SpaceX completed no less than six major B4 S20 cryo proof tests in 15 days. Critically, all six cryoproofs were performed with Starbase's nascent orbital tank farm, thoroughly testing its storage and distribution capabilities. Additionally, because SpaceX began liquid methane deliveries on February 13th, some of those tests, particularly with Ship 20, may have even been proper wet dress rehearsals, meaning SpaceX may have filled the rockets with liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellant to replicate preparations for a real launch. At a minimum, Super Heavy Booster 4's oxidizer tank was fully filled with liquid oxygen, possibly pressurized with hot gaseous oxygen during the March 1st cryoproof. While its fuel tank was filled about two-thirds of the way either with liquid nitrogen or methane, prior to the February and March test, Booster 4 had already completed three cryoproofs, some also using LOX in December 2021. Ship 20 had completed a cryo-proof and four static fire tests. All told, short of finally performing a full super heavy wet dress rehearsal and static fire at the orbital launch site, it's not all that clear what more SpaceX can derive from additional individual cryo-proof testing of Ship 20 or Booster 4. Several things do still need to be demonstrated, however, SpaceX has also yet to simultaneously perform a cryo-proof or a wet dress rehearsal test, then static fire the booster with a fully loaded stack, which will be necessary for orbital test flights. One or several of those to-be-completed tests may be why SpaceX installed Ship 20 on top of Booster 4 this time. And again, the question posed by those who have always followed SpaceX closely, when will the B4S20 Duo be used for the first orbital flight? In our opinion, B4S20 will never fly. They are only used for test vehicles. It's likely that the B7S24 will be more suitable for the first full orbital flight. In addition to B7, the SpaceX team has B8 screaming along and B9 kicking off strong also. For the past year, Elon and his propulsion engineers have been going full tilt on developing and ground testing the much improved Raptor 2 engine for the orbital test flights. Only now, after dozens, well, perhaps hundreds of test firings, is Raptor 2 nearing flight readiness. Raptor 1, which is used for a B-4 now, will be retired before the first orbital test flight. It's clear that SpaceX is in the midst of a significant period of design revision on Starship that could see Ship 24 debut with a wide range of upgrades and design changes in just a few months to be compatible with B7 onwards. Well, that's all the information we have today, and if you like what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, become our patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. And as a quick note, if you've got advertising needs, contact us directly via the email address below. As always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.